So I'm thinking of uploading this in two parts. So this is the second part. Um, welcome back. So this is a discussion part. I have two pages worth of notes. I started reading and I was 40 pages through and I remembered I had to take notes because I'm going to forget what to talk about. Well, not really, but I'm going to forget little things I want to talk about. So I'm going to try to go through these as fast as possible, but still discussing them. And if any point I raise piques your interest, we could definitely have a discussion in the comments or we can all have a discussion in the comments. Like I just really love talking about these books. So my first part is poor Emily. I feel really bad for Emily because she's hearing voices in her head and just really stressed out. And I feel really bad for her because technically they didn't really do anything. They became friends with her. Yeah, they were part in taking Allie to um, Addison Stevens, I'm pretty sure, preserve, the preserve. Um, but they didn't really, like, it was her parents that should have been more, like, in tune with the kids and been like, make sure they're getting the right one to go there. I don't really see how it's their necessarily fault. I see where Allie could have gone crazy and blamed them, but... I still feel bad for Emily because like they didn't know this was all gonna happen or they probably would not have gone to the backyard that day. So Mr. De Laurentiis' comment, I thought that was idiotic how he's blaming the girls for killing his daughter and blah 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 when his daughter has been on, si killed her sister first off. Even though Nick kind of admitted to that, she was still uh, an accessory to the crime I see it as. Even if her diary proves that, I thought that was idiotic because first of all, not even his daughter. I don't know if he knows that though in the books, I can can't remember. But I was like, your daughter is a psycho too, so you can't really blame them and be like, oh, they killed her when there's no body. And even though these girls have been going on, I, I was just like, he is crazy. Like, to even blame them when his daughter has put them through all this crap. And they knew that even, like, when she was pretending to be Courtney and burned down the house and... Yeah. So then I put a note, who's Allie's accomplice? I really wanted to know. And obviously that was not answered yet. And then we have Emily's suicide attempt. At first, I didn't really believe it was a suicide attempt. I thought Spencer was going to be able to save her. And I was like, what? And then that leads me to Ren's return. I really liked her Ren return because it put, kind of was another thing that pulled the book series full circle and kind of connected us back to the beginning of the series when Ren was Melissa's fiance. And I just really liked him coming back. And I really liked him better this time. Um, and I really like how he actually came through and actually became a doctor. And you can kind of see the time progress because he was just, I think, I think he was just a medical student still in the first book I'm pretty sure and Emily's gone in the funeral I was like the one thing about the cover when it was black I was like one of the pretty liars is going to die I'm pretty sure and in my like feeling I had a feeling it might be Emily because Emily has always been kind of like I'd, I've always seen her as the weaker one in the group so when she died I wasn't like totally surprised but it's really weird how like sometimes her character get on my nerves but sometimes she wouldn't get on my nerves like like every character in this book um, there's certain times where you like a certain character better than the other and it's really weird when you're reading the book and you have different perspectives where you don't have an Emily perspective and it just feels like you're missing one part of the puzzle. Um, obviously these notes are taken in chronological order so my facts are not going to be up to date because obviously we know what happens in the end so I'm just going in order so it's going to be a little it's just going to be my reaction to certain scenes. And then Mrs. Field saying they were evil and couldn't go to the funeral, yet before she accused her daughter of being guilty. What a psycho, that's what I wrote. So I really got angry how Miss Fields wouldn't let um, Spencer, Aria, or Hannah talk at Emily's funeral, and how they kind of made it like all about her swimming. I was angry about that, and so was like later in the book, Emily was angry about that. But I really found that stupid because Miss Fields, I forget which book it was, but when she went to the hospital, she blamed Emily, basically isolated her from the family, and kind of made Emily out to be crazy and now that Emily is dead it's suddenly the liar's fault and it's like like where do you get off saying that like you blamed your daughter for being evil and now you're blaming her friends for being evil and bringing her down yet like it just didn't make any sense it's like if you blamed her for being evil now you're just blaming her friends her friends were the ones with her who were actually holding her through all this like it was just I found it dumb it's like you accused her of being a psycho and now you're calling your friends psycho oh my gosh and then I was really upset. I was like, no, I didn't want the Pretty Liars to split up because I was like, you guys have been through so much. Like, don't split up now. Arya making a run. I was very shocked about that. But Arya, um, going back to, like, Europe, I wasn't too shocked about where she planned on going. But I was very shocked she even got to make the run for and she wasn't recognized. Um, Mike's proposal, that was super sweet. I loved that. That was one of my favorite parts of this book because I just really liked how happy moment was happening for Hannah. And Hannah and Mike are my favorite couple who's been in the book recently. Um, I think it started like around the ninth book or something or the eighth book. I can't quite remember, but I've really liked their couple like coupling off. Um, and then Hannah's call to her dad I thought was really awesome when she told him he can't come to the wedding because I know like revenge is bad. We know that. But this is not really ven revengeful, but he's done so many mean things. It just felt really satisfying even to me as a reader to hear her say that because 
sometimes when somebody hurts you and you just like say something that's not necessarily mean but just kind of be like oh I don't want you in my life and they get kind of offended it can kind of give you a rush like not that I really like I backed off for people and just like ignored them kind of but it does give you a rush because you're like you can't stop me you can't hurt me anymore and I could kind of feel where she was getting at um Noel go Noel goes I always call him Noel because I knew a no uh, like I knew a guy named Noel and now he's like Noel in the book um Noel goes to Amsterdam so basically I found that was like really risky I was like what are you doing Noel but that was such a great surprise and I was actually really happy he did that because it made the um, Arya's time in Amsterdam more and like around Europe more interesting. Um, Spencer's mom, I hated her in this book. She was just so heartless. She's like, oh, Amelia can have your jewels when you go off to jail. And I was like, seriously? I was like, I know she can be harsh, but that was just, she was, uh, yeah. If I were Spencer, I wouldn't have forgiven her that easily at the end. I would have been a little bit more harsher because it's like, you basically told me like, I was going to jail. You didn't even believe in me, and I'm your child. Like, she just acted very rude, and she said a lot of uncalled for things. I get where she's upset, but you're, it's innocent until proven guilty, and she was still on trial at that point. Um, Melissa and Darren and their baby, I was really happy about that because I really liked how Melissa and Darren got together, and now that they're having a baby and, like, getting married, I find that a very good way to wrap up Melissa's character. The Ezra cameo, I loved that <laughs> How she he was like, and his new book comes out, and then she's like, publicity, you know the word. Um, but I just found that really funny, and I really liked how they included an Ezra cameo because I hate Ezra now in the books. Like, if you pass the temp book, you know what I'm talking about. Obviously, if you're watching this, I hope you pass the temp book. Um, but Ezra in the show, like, I really love Ezra's character in the show, but like in the book, he's just horrible. Um, who is the surprise witness? That's who I really wanted to know. It turned out to be. What's his name? Nicholas Maxwell. Um, Arya caught by the feds. I was not, I was kind of shocked at that because I was like, oh, she's, she's like, Noel's right. She's just acting crazy. But it was actually the feds. And that was such a, like, really, like, turning point. Um, I really put a, I put a point for Rubens after the prosecution. Yeah, he was really good. He was lethal. He had all the facts. And I really thought this was going to get the liars off the hook. And I was really happy. And that just banter, the, um, the courtroom just was really exciting to read. Um, Hannah and her mom, I really liked how Hannah was remembering memories of her mom because we've heard about all basically her dad, but her mom and her relationship has been good but been rocky, but I really like her. Her mom throughout the book has been really by her side, even though Hannah hasn't been the best teenager, and I really liked how she supported her decision to get married too, and just remembering all the good times of her mom. Um, the wedding was really cute. I was really happy about that. That was one of the plot points that really was good. Um, I'm glad Spencer didn't leave. I didn't want her to leave. I did, it's not Spencer's character really to leave. Spencer's one of those people that I feel like is really will stand up to conflict. So I didn't, I'm glad she didn't leave. Prison, that was really like creepy. That reminded me of an episode of like Beyond Scared Straight. If you've seen that show, I think it's an A&E show. My sister and brother watched it a few times. It's a pretty scary show. It's basically they go and scare, like they take kids that are really like not bad, but they've gone into trouble quite a bit. Some of them are really bad. And basically put them in like a prison program for I think 48 hours or something. And it kind of like some of them will be scared straight to get on the good path, I guess. Um, but that was really like, like just that the liars were going to prison was shocking. The alley cats in prison, that was also shocking when they had the A tattoo. I was like, what the heck? Like, how'd you get all these people? I really want to know how she did get all these people. Um, I put Emily's alive, explanation point, explanation point, explanation point. And I was just really happy that Emily was alive. And I put Go Emily finally took initiative. I'm really happy Emily finally took initiative because throughout the book series, she has always been that character who I'm like the weakest one of the group, the weakest one of the crop, and she finally was strong. And I really like that as an ending point because we didn't see Emily as this weak teenager anymore. We saw her as a strong person who really got like got like up there and took initiative against Allie, and I really enjoyed that. And it was a good way to end off her characters, like your perception of the character. Allie's working with her mom, Misty Laurentis, like crazy she's crazy in the show too but I was just I did not expect to be working for mom in the beginning I thought it was actually a guy um and I was thinking like I was like who could it be like who could it be and I was thinking about I was like I don't want it to be someone close to Lars and it's like a giant shock but I was like at the same time that'd be really interesting um I put bye bye Allie when she was getting taken away and yay they're cleared um, I really did enjoy those parts. I really liked how Allie finally got her justice and she's finally going to jail and she turned into So by this she... point I've been filming for about 20 minutes and we're still going but basically page 290 had a really good quote. I didn't want to write it down because 
I want to keep reading, but I will read it to you because I really like this and I feel like it sums up the series perfectly. And it is, do do do, um, do 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 do. Allie didn't manage to kill us, she said. She only made us stronger. And I really like that line. It just summed up the series. It was just a great line I found in the series, like for the series. Um, and then I put Allie in jail. Ha. Like, I was just really happy. Um, also, I was really happy when Agent Fuji apologized because she's one of the characters I really hated throughout the books because she was just so lethal towards the girls. And I'm really happy that um, Sarah Shepard, like, had her come in and apologize because um, I just really liked that for wrapping up her character. I was happy of Noel and Arya, how they got the apology out of the way and they're back together. Um, and I love the nuances to the first book. So we have Emily's bets of herself. I know she did this throughout the series. Star Power, which is the game Spencer played of her family. And the Tiffany's bracelet from the book, first book of Hannah. And I think there was a nuance to Arya's character, but I forget what that was now. And I love how the book came full circle and we had a happy ending. And I especially loved how at the end we had a little message from Allie from the psych ward. And it kind of was creepy and... Yeah, I just really enjoyed that, and I found the book to be a satisfying conclusion. I had a hard time reading it because I kept wanting to put it down because I'm really bad at endings, but so far the series has been amazing. I don't regret picking up. I'm really happy I saw it that day in the bookstore, and it's really weird to think it's over, um, maybe because I, like, it was really hard for me because it was, like, putting down a piece of my, like, adolescence, um, which is, sounds really weird because it's a book, but it's been with me for a long time. It's one of the first teen books I actually really started, like, collecting and reading, and yeah it's just awesome series and yeah so let me know what you guys follow the conclusion did you think it was satisfying um what were your favorite parts anything i just want to discuss this and once again tune into my announcement tomorrow i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later bye